Hey fellow traders, welcome back to the discretionary trading lessons. This is part two. I've seen this before. This video is basically going to cover patterns, the common patterns and the uncommon patterns, as well as characteristic type behaviors, pair specific type behaviors, uh, these various little nuances uh, so to speak of each pair to kind of give us a heads up ahead of time of what's actually going in the market and What's probably likely to come out of the current situation that we're looking at and the market is presenting to us uh, If this is your first video uh, Welcome to the channel uh, Make sure you definitely check out part one even though it's not entirely necessary to have that uh, It's gonna ex this video is gonna kind of expand on that So make sure you do definitely check that video out after this video I'll leave a link at the end uh, and you can go and visit that one as well uh, if uh, for those of you who have already subscribed and returning welcome back I appreciate all your support and let's go ahead and get into today's topic of everything we're going to be looking at so basically what we're going to start with is some basic patterns uh, like your double top your double bottom uh, and then we're going to basically take a look at adding some of these basic patterns together to make a true overall context of the current situation in the market. Uh, I'm going to talk about ways to accelerate your experience. There's, uh, as a lot of us know, there really is no replacement for experience other than time and actually doing it. But in this video, I'm going to kind of cover some ways that you could really push that uh, time frame of completion to a much sooner point in time uh, it's basically where you're just going to study a still chart you're gonna pull up various time frames like the one hour the 15 minute the five minute and you're just going to study what's already happened uh, based on a uh, event and move type uh, analysis and you're gonna look at each move and the event that happened prior to it and basically just kind of see if you can notice any type of reason why that move was made if you don't notice uh, anything right away after that part try to look and combine other parts of what's going on in the relevant area and that will actually give you more of a basic idea of what's likely to happen I give quite a few examples of complex patterns and how to combine everything together and give you a lot of different ideas of some different things that you can look at I know technical analysis is one of those things that we all see differently uh, but uh, you know we can all kind of use a few basic things and a few common things that I'm going to show in this video and try to hopefully get you to see the market in a way that I'm seeing it uh, I know one of the biggest ways I actually trade is I'm not looking at any single specific candle formula formations or any specific patterns in general I'm mostly just looking at levels and then I'm looking at how is price acting characteristically you know, I'm not just looking at, okay, this is a double bottom, let me go long. I'm actually looking at things like, okay, are the candles smooth? And then when they approach the level, does the volatility increase? Do we have any pen bar, can pen ball, uh, pen bar candles in this area? So on and so forth. And then do we have any other things around this double top, double bottom, head and shoulders, so on and so forth? Are we currently in a range? Is the market trending? Uh, and I'll take and combine all of those things together and that will actually show me a way of looking at the market Which I'll kind of cover in this video uh, I do kind of ramble on a little bit uh, So I went ahead and recorded this introduction to kind of give you a heads up uh, There's a lot of small ideas spread throughout the video uh, There is no real specific Okay, this is about this. This is about that because basically what I've done is I've kind of taken a chart and when I just started basically working backwards with it um, I know uh, the pair that I'm most common commonly familiar with and trading is the euro USD uh, I talk about a few different things in that uh, in the upcoming video because that's the price chart that I use as the example uh, one thing I don't mention though is uh, 
one a uh, couple of different typical behaviors uh, i do talk about one behavior where it does like to make liquidity runs at the london session open uh, one other uh, example of a typical behavior of the euro usd that i did not mention in the video is that it does like to go the wrong way first and basically what that means is if it's going to be a bearish type day or a down type day it will typically rise up and move a little bit higher first uh, a typical uh, a second typical behavior of the euro usd is it will like to challenge the nearest uh, previous day's high or low quite frequently break it only slightly and then reverse directions so you know other pairs such as the usd jpy it has a lot of volatility at times due to bank interference uh different uh various aspects of the economy uh and just so on and so forth and they are very commonly moving during the tokyo and early london session uh, but one thing about that that is a typical behavior of that pair is very good at going everywhere and nowhere at once uh, it can move very far, and it can also end up right back where it started just a few minutes later. So uh, by knowing that, you can develop a discretionary trading plan based on that. Uh, and if you're into the uh, Aussie dollar, for example, that one uh, typical behavior is it's rangy. It likes to go up, down, and back to the center, make a lot of dojis, a lot of long tails. Uh, very rarely does it actually just get on a strong move in one direction. It typically does a lot of relief moves, a lot of pullbacks. It will tend to hold a long-term trend, but it will do a lot of pullbacks and micro downtrends and an uptrend and vice versa for a downtrend. So that is one characteristic for the Aussie dollar to keep in mind. Uh, I'm mostly Euro USD focused, so I just know only a few basics. But over time, as you spend more time trading and studying the pairs, you'll start to notice different typical behaviors of that pair. Just keep in mind that each pair is kind of like a child. Each one has their own little personality, uh, their own little volatility, which I'll refer to as like their own little tantrums that they like to throw every now and then. Uh, you know, like for example, the JPY, when the bank interferes, it will move 600 pips down and then 700 pips back up. Uh, so, you know, that's what I would consider like a typical tantrum behavior of a, uh, you know, and, and anytime you have like a liquidity sweep on the Euro USD, a lot of times it may only break the high by a few pips. So that would be its typical type of attitude when it's trying to make a move. So those are, you know, you're kind of thinking a little bit outside the box as you're trying to look at things. You're not really looking for your typical common, uh, double top, double bottom, so on. You're just your basic things. You're trying to combine basically the overall picture of the market based on where you came from in order to know where you're going. Because just like in life, if you don't know, you know where you came from, it's kind of hard to know and determine where you're going. So price kind of works the same way. If you start to see a downtrend, things start to slow down, you start to see some hard spikes and rejections, then you know it's likely to reverse. You came from the top side, you're down, you're now sitting here for a while, so it's likely for a buildup to be occurring, and then it goes back up. So uh, you're kind of looking out, you're kind of thinking outside the box to look at everything as a whole, not just one specific signal, one specific trigger, like what most strategies will teach you to trade with. And uh, oh, throughout the video, I'm also going to point out a few different things like price action specific type typical behaviors. One thing I like uh, to use and one thing I show is a mechanical divergence. Uh, I also kind of refer to using support and resistance quite a bit. And I also do cover towards the end a rather complex uh, build-up type pattern uh, is something that you could probably look a little bit further into, but it's basically known as the Wyckoff schematic. Uh, I show, uh, I do actually run into an example where there is quite a clean schematic of a Wyckoff accumulation on the chart, so I do cover that in that video as well. So a little bit of further study in complex patterns will actually come in the handy when it comes to uh, doing discretionary trading. 
So you would know that, you know, for example, of the Wyckoff accumulation, there's a uh, part of the schematic referred to as the spring. Once you see the, the spring, which is the main part of what I focus on when I do recognize that pattern, I'll be looking to basically take a long at the bottom of that accumulation pattern, which is likely where that spring is going to wind up. But I actually kind of cover that in a later part of the video. So make sure you watch it all the way through to catch all the little details and all the little tricks and tips, uh, as well as a few different things involving trend lines and support and resistance. Uh, one of the biggest uh, break breakthroughs that I made with trying to keep up with trends is the trend line and I also talk about a little tip to show uh, trend exhaustion so there's just all kind of little uh, details and notes and little things that I've learned over my years of watching price action watching charts uh, I did a lot of time on the one minute so I was actually reading quite a lot of fractal market structure and observing a lot of different type movements uh so uh you know basically everything's going to apply to just about every different type of chart frame time frame and setup uh it's just all based on how you want to trade so i kind of advise uh though looking at time frames as a group not just trying to look at one specific time frame pick one that you definitely want to prefer to trade one that maybe works with your lifestyle like if you're uh, still working you may want to choose the hourly or four hour to to trade with and if you're more of a scalper you may want to work with the 15 minute and a five minute and a one hour uh, and primarily trade off the 15 uh, it just kind of all depends on your preference but I would highly advise to at least step up and step down one level of time frame so if you primarily trade the hour I would still try to take a look and study a little bit on the four hour and the 15 minute and if you like to trade the five minute i would probably take a little bit of a look at the one minute the 15 minute and if you really uh are really looking for finding those good scout moves i would also advise of reading the hourly as well because a lot of times those hourly levels are going to be fairly strong but i'm going to go ahead and switch over to the charts and start the lesson um, it does look like price kind of respected the last analysis that we were taking a look at in the last video uh, it did come down we had a little push down but it was a very weak push there was a stop run liquidity run basically in this area I ended up uh, getting a position somewhere right around in here I had the stop a little bit lower using just that arbitrary stop so we uh, was able to clear through that now we're up top and I'm gonna still hold that position and as far as the challenge goes and one other account that I'm working with and see if that doesn't just take off to the upside and try to reach the highs up here, maybe even possibly get back up to the 109.845. So that's my discretionary read of the market. And the way I'm getting that is through just basically looking at the overall build of consolidation. Most of this price action is in the upper range of the consolidation. When we came down, we came right back up very quickly. Um, I know we do have some news coming up as well, so that's going to tend to cause your consolidation for an extended period of time coming up to that news, but you can also take advantage of the fractal market, which is kind of what that other strategy I was playing with and forward testing now kind of does. Let's go ahead and get into the second part of discretionary trading. and. I'm going to use, stay on the Euro USD mainly because it's my primary pair, but also because I'm kind of just keeping an eye on this price right now for that strategy too. But uh, we can go ahead and start talking about a few different things. Uh, in the last video, uh, we did kind of cover a few of the basics with the event motion. So we had a strong event and push here. There may, that would mean with the liquidity sweep uh, and the uh, constant support from before and really any further back I wouldn't consider being too important I'm just looking at mostly the most recents um, so we kind of 
I don't lost my train of thought. Sorry about that. Oh, yes, the order flows. And so that's kind of a really good sign that we have a lot of basically support right here for the long side so that I'm going to be looking for some more long opportunities. I'm thinking this pattern here. Uh, where you have a really strong up push and then a very slow retreat. Now we're at a solid level on the above side. That's one uh, topic that we're we're going to get into first, and that's the patterns. Um, now you're going to notice and talk a lot about the common patterns like your double bottoms, but a lot of times just using those patterns alone you're not going to have a lot of success so what i like to do is to try to look at the last couple of days i can actually turn on the um session break so we can see each day and i'll just look at the last few days sometimes i may look at a longer period of time but a lot of times after a couple of weeks i'm not really too concerned because Obviously, the world was different. The news was different. We've had a lot of events happen over that time. Uh, and now, right now, currently, we've got some news releases coming up. So that right there, out of experience, tells me that the market is going to slow down and consolidate. And almost every time we have a high impact news, the euro does tend to slow down. So that's one of the patterns uh, that you'll kind of notice as you're looking through. Um, what you're going to want to try to do basically starting out though is just learn a few basic patterns but then instead of looking at just the simple patterns themselves you want to actually look at some characteristics of what's going on in the actual levels and the price action because that's going to tell you a lot more than just a pattern by itself so yes this might be a great bottom but let's say you tried to take a retest long here had to stop here and got stopped out. Well, now you think you're going short, but instead it was just a, a, a liquidity grab to push things higher. So that is one of the instances where the pattern by itself failed you. But if you look back a little bit, you can see there was already a strong push off of here. Um, another common pattern that I see quite often is where price will push up quickly try to consolidate but not even be able to go flat and then it'll just ramp right back up and continue going long so usually by the time you have this break you know you're probably going to get a wick back here that's a real common pattern that I notice so in order for uh, you to be able to really accelerate your experience you're going to basically just take a chart um, per, of any pair or preferably a pair that you like to trade often and you're just basically gonna take a look at the price action going back in the chart now I know in the last video we talked about the event move type structure and then you're gonna combine that with the type of patterns and then you're gonna refer to something that a lot of traders will say is context so you'll try to see uh, basically, like where did price come from? And in order to know where you're going, you, it helps a lot to know where you're coming from. So a common market rule is if we have a push down, usually there's a pullback and we've been kind of consolidating. It's kind of it's kind of presented that way in the past as well. So it's very possible that we've already had a couple of pushes we've been coming down for a while that it could be time for a reversal um we did have a big push out of this area before but that is quite a distance back even just looking at an hourly chart so i wouldn't put too much merit into that being the area i might even look for that to be a more major level and that is something i'll actually get into with the next video but for this video here, the main focus is just going to be simple patterns. So we're going to take a look at some of our basic patterns. We're going to take a look at putting different patterns together with other ideas. So like, for example, we have a perfect uh, idea here that will typically indicate a market reversal. It's called a one, two, three pattern. Uh, but if we take a look at first, at first glance we have our point one and at this area we're starting to get what's commonly known as a head and shoulders we got the left shoulder the head the right shoulder then price continues down which is typical of a head and shoulders pattern 
and then the price comes up and this is a shorter term type uh, chart and move but that is the third point the second point is where price would grow go below the neckline of the head and shoulders and then come back up and then the third point is usually going to line up somewhere in the consolidation of the shoulders and then price would typically roll down that's what's considered a complex pattern so if you were just looking at this as a basic head and shoulders you still could have gotten that typical trade entry and having your stop here above the shoulder or even above the high but another thing you could do with discretion instead of just taking a blind entry you could actually see right here where we started looking at curves in the market in the last video and one thing you'll start to notice is when the volatility came up and started going down it probably went down first then came back up this would be considered a typical liquidity type setup uh, and one thing that I know just from experience, this is another thing that kind of helps with discretion and setting stop losses and even potential entry points. Uh, if you see price kind of pushing real hard down and you have sort of a curve type pattern, a lot of times price will return to about to mid the midpoint or just above. So whenever you see a setup like this on the Euro USD, I know just from experience and looking at it that we're not going to go very high above this previous high when we're doing a sweep to continue going lower so uh, over time just by simply watching the price charts you'll start to notice different things like that um, but in order to gain that experience a little bit faster you can basically just keep looking at different aspects of the chart of what's going on so uh, what I like to recommend is just basically take one move and one, uh, basically one event and one move at a time. So right now, this would be considered our event, and this would be considered our move. Now, we did kind of get a little bit of a stall here. I don't know if I would really consider that an event or not, because we really didn't do much there, but we did create sort of a flag pattern with a fake down. but if I look at that as an overall view of things we're in an uptrend and it didn't really break that trend line and there was and if we had a short moving average there it didn't really break until this area here so that's what I'm kind of viewing just by looking at it so I would consider that probably one move all the way up to the top and then now we're having the breakout above the highs so that might potentially uh, add it up with this for maybe this even to go long but it did break down and go short so this is when we can get into looking at something else that I like to use that usually works on most pairs and that's the divergent type entry it didn't really get a full lineup there on that one but one thing that I do like to do with uh, trend lines and such it's got pretty close is I actually like to go with the most common setup and usually this type of trend line setup with most common that will a lot of times line up on a breakout point where you had price come across so like if you pulled that trend line there across these two points and then you start this trend line here and even if we lined it up, say on that first time it started pushing up and just extended it out, we can see that price extended it. And then we know if we have a trade on, once it starts to break this line, we could probably look for closing it once it comes back to the line. And that's what I usually refer to as a mechanical divergence type pattern. And it usually happens quite often where it'll break come back and usually the retest is going to line up right on this old uh, most common trend line so I will actually use that as a common discretionary entry and then on top of that uh, you could see if you were looking at this to try to look at this day here to take this trade you would see that you okay you've already got a break of the original trend line from the previous day uh, right now I'm on the 15 minute chart but I'm really just looking at the actual price movement in general so the actual time frame itself I wouldn't consider relative 
I'm just kind of looking at it. I know these separators are each day, and I'm just kind of observing each day. I'm looking at price as a whole, so I'm not really looking for one particular entry signal or another. I'm looking to combine everything that's kind of going on with the consolidation, with the combination of price action, and just from my overall experience that, like I say, you would have to study. Um, but we'll walk back through the chart, and I'll try to explain a few more things to try to help you see what you may need to look for. But going back on that analysis, so we have that break of the line, the divergent retest. It did go down, but now it kind of stalled out. But now we started making another trend line here. And notice here that it started to get a volatility increase once it got near that line. We also have a little bit of a level there. Uh, when we were referring to our support and resistance. So uh, going, this will kind of lead into the next video too, but there is a big volatility change here. Uh, it also kind of lines up with pre-market on the New York session, so that's kind of a typical expectation. But then it has the break and it just continues lower. But you also notice that we have lo uh, lower highs. So now we can pull that trend line and we're starting to get a break and notice how we have this set up again where if we go from higher higher high and we just kind of cut through. One other thing I like to typically do is I will start the point. If we have something like this, I'll start that on the highest point. And then any other touch, I will use the close of the candle or the open of the candle to run that line. It tends to line up a lot better like especially in this example here so notice how it cuts through it breaks across it kind of rides across the top now we're starting to catch some more of the bottom resistance so my discretionary read for what's coming i would think price is going to go up so that would be the analysis and i would leave that on and we'll see how closely it lines up it's probably not going to do exactly that because we still got a little bit of time to go before the news we may chop around just a little bit in here like this and then maybe tap back down and then finally go up so we'll see kind of what happens we may even get something where it doesn't come down much at all it may just do something along the lines like this and just start pushing up once we get to hit the news so it kind of looks like that might be the formation of the pattern and I'm making that prediction just by looking at this level here I'm looking at this level here and I'm kind of just going with the overall flow of looking at what I see and kind of expecting that to kind of repeat to make a rough estimate so that's what I would be calling for price action based on just out of reading these last few days and we'll see how well that lines up in the next part but let's go ahead and move back we can even go to a completely different area now so if you start to look uh, we'll take first of the area mainly in consolidation we have a little bit of a break I would probably even start to include that once we start getting that uh, choppiness up because it's kind of breaking out going back in so it's kind of just completely disrespecting the top of that level I would leave this level intact though just because it lines up so I would kind of be taking a look at that but now notice that after price left consolidation it went down notice that a majority of our price action is on the lower side of consolidation another thing that is a tip off that we're about to leave the range for the downside is this curve once you start to see a curve in the price action like this is very common for that to indicate that sellers are really starting to add in here you have your early birds coming in too so like they're just getting FOMO they want to jump in they think it's gonna run away before it gets to the level then as time passes, more sellers get involved. Then some of the bigger sellers start to get involved. You get your stop stop hunt here over the last high for the other early birds. And it probably takes out all of these people here for liquidity there. Takes things down, comes back up. And now this is where sellers really start to take over. Now they do one more liquidity grab.
go right to the top, try to knock out everybody with their stop loss sitting right on top of that candle. And then down it goes. So usually these little curves will indicate because notice we don't really have much of any kind of curve going on. These are more of straight lines. So we have the straight line there. We have our straight trend line here, which we could actually follow. And you could probably even look at that as a break. Uh, let's go from there to there. And then look at how nicely those closes line up. Everything is making sort of that pennant or that uh, bearish pennant or the triangle. But then notice that once your price breaks through that level, you can kind of be pretty confident it's going down because we have most of our activity on the downside of this pattern. So you could probably look for that mechanical divergence. You may have got in somewhere like there. Go over the previous day's high. So we have a pretty close stop loss. And then you could target previous lows. You could go to the bottom of the wick, which is a pretty common setup. You could go with a typical return of about 90 to 100 pips I like to use. And that lines up on another level from before. Uh, that also kind of lines up with our pattern. So you could have made quite a significant gain. Or you could have trailed everything up and ended up somewhere... Somewhere around in here when price started to break back up, you may have stopped out there, which still leaves you with 106 pips. So if we kind of zoom that up, no, that was 63 pips. So still a three and a half to one, which is a very good ratio over time. So that is one thing to keep in mind whenever you notice these triangle patterns or consolidation patterns or... Uh, any type of shape now we do have a little bit of a curve here if you zoom out and look at it but I wouldn't really say it's very defined it looks more like a double bottom but we never got a strong push to go out so once it starts to try to come off a double bottom try to push out and does not a lot of times you can expect that to be a fake breakout especially when price starts to slow down a little bit and drift back into the range then, you know, we had that other liquidity grab here. This uh, probably happens somewhere around the London session, oftentimes on the Euro. Um, I know from experience that it's good. Uh, the London session is generally going to be when these liquidity runs happen. So uh, I usually tend to look out for most of the entries there and look at the price action there because usually there will be a strong snap of action going on and once we get that strong snap of action and then it snaps back the other way i'm pretty confident to know that it's going to travel probably to the next level at least which is usually 45 to 90 pips away so all of this i've noticed from experience i've also noticed just from simply taking a price tool and measuring things out so like uh one thing you could do with your pair is just kind of take note of ranges notice how far apart they typically spread and span so like right now if we go from there to there notice these are, are making ranges typically in the 90 pip range so that can help you with lining up some of your strategy some of your planning so like if you're expecting some news to come up i have to turn on my history i imagine there probably was a bit of news going on around in here uh probably especially right in here but uh Typically, you can take a look and notice that once you've kind of established a little bit of a range or you're expecting kind of a range and you've got a possible clear bottom, you can kind of guesstimate the top. And that can give you a little bit of, of a look ahead type uh, prediction uh, just by simply knowing from experience, okay, you know, I've kind of seen this set up before. Like, notice here we have our consolidation area. We'll go ahead and do a quick review on this one as well. Notice the same pattern. Majority of the price action of this consolidation is towards the top. We had that dip down, which we talked about in the last video, which I was expecting for an overall outlook. Very short amount of time with price action in the lower range of the consolidation. 
So usually once price gets back up here, sometimes it may do a liquidity run down, but you can be fairly confident it's probably going to go up before the news, you, and you can know this before the news hits. So uh, that's one of the best ways I like to look at consolidation. And like notice here, we've got uh, a, our final push. Uh, this is another little pattern that I notice all the time. When you have sort of a trend line going, uh, let's see if we can find something that looks a little bit better. Mm, not really too much going on there. <coughs> Excuse me. But this does present a very extremely common pattern that I see across a lot of different pairs. So right now we have sort of a little flatness and then it starts to climb and trend up we didn't really have much of a break to go off of but we'll use the level to make that and notice how well everything lines up and then notice the volatility across the break but one of the things i want to point out to show a moves exhaustion this is actually pretty important is these two points right here you're going to notice this very often when a trend is finally exhausted. Uh, this happens 99 times out of 100. I see it all the time when a trend is over. It happens on all time frames. But typically, you will have a push, a retrace, and then a push again. But this final push will not go very far past the last high. Usually once you see that, it tries, it stays up there for a short time and starts to come back down. Typically, that is your sign to close out your position because oftentimes it will signal that the trend is exhausted and it's time to turn the market and retrace or even completely change direction. So this is a pattern that you can see where there aren't many retests going on. It basically just says, okay, I'm done. We're going the other way now. So oftentimes this will be your early clue, those two points there on a current trend to let you know, okay, this is over. Once it starts coming back down, now I know to go ahead and take short and we can get a fairly tight risk to reward. We'll do a 23 pip. And even if you were looking at the next level, 98 pips or so, then you could take a four point three or more you could also wait for this breakout catch the divergent entry once it's clear uh, you may not want to grab that right away you could have waited until the next day grabbed it from there clean divergent entry go above the highs and get a little bit higher risk to reward or you could have also used a trailing stop and notice that we still had this trend could have used discretion to then say, okay, there's a common line, and you could have actually trailed your stop. And every time it goes, retraces and rejects the line, you can just put your stop above, and you could have actually taken this one quite far. So this is one way you could actually let your runners run. And notice how far we could have taken this before we finally got to the bottom. So if you were really patient with your trading and looking for a really long uh, go for something further, this is one way you can manage a stop loss. Every time you get a rejection off of a common line like that, then move it down. Usually you'll wait for it to cross that low. So once it gets that rejection and crosses here, that's when you would move your stop to here. Then we start to get a little bit of a cross and you may have actually followed this all the way down to here, took it out there, or you could have actually manually closed it at that area once it starts to cross. And then we would be looking at about a 12 R trade just by using discretion for the entry, no indicators or anything like that. So, that would give us almost 200 pips in just that one move, but you would have to be very patient for it. Keep an eye on the charts over time. You don't necessarily have to watch the charts constantly while the trade is on. You can always use a higher time frame analysis, uh, which is one of the notes that we kind of went over in the first video. 
so the 15 minute is going to be influenced mostly by the hourly the hourly chart is going to be mostly influenced by the four hour the four hour is going to be mostly influenced by the daily and so on and so forth so if you are looking and you have a pretty clear picture from a higher time frame chart for example then you could take that into account when you're looking inwards so like at first take a look at maybe the four hour or the daily so if you have a pretty clear picture of what you think might happen off of that hourly then you can step into the 15 minute and start to really break things down take a look at just the most recent few days to see what's kind of going on kind of look and use your judgment and you know exactly see exactly what's kind of going on there's another one of those kind of close divergent entries uh, for example, so we start on our tail and we go with most common line. So it didn't quite make it there, but once it started going lower, you could probably go ahead and take another trade at that point. Let me get rid of that line real quick. And so you may have caught it once it broke here. You could have just let it fall through, take it to the bottom level, 54 pips. And then you could have used like a trailing stop in that example as well. Uh, it kind of all depends on your style of trading and how you want to trade. Uh, it's kind of 50-50 with targets and trailing stops. A lot of times I'll set a trade a few days in advance. Uh, like for example right now the one on the challenge I've currently been holding for a couple of days. I caught it right here. And I've just been kind of holding it through and waiting. So, but still, while I'm waiting, I'm still analyzing the market. I'm trying to make sure everything's still on track for going up. I know I'm fairly safe on my stop loss level. So, I'm just kind of waiting it out at this point. And I'm actually trying to get a fairly significant amount of pips. I'm actually looking at, I entered about right there. I took the entry just because it was on the level. And I'm actually looking for something around the range of right there i'm using just the arbitrary 30 pip stop and i'm looking for a trade kind of like that i'm looking to take it back to that previous high and then i might be looking for some other type of play out of there but for right now that's kind of what this full read of this kind of build up is i've noticed most of the price action is up top so i'm gonna look to take it up to the top so we'll see what happens in a couple of days but as you're looking to try to become discretionary, just make note of different things uh, as you're going through the chart because 99% of discretionary trading is, hey, I've seen this before and this usually happens every time I see this. So then I'm going to take a trade this way. So like for example, going back on that curve idea. So uh, we break out that one point that we took a look at let me get back to finding it real quick. Here we go. The pattern that we just made last Thursday. So we were looking at this area here. I'll go ahead and circle it. Notice where it was going kind of shallow and then kind of started to curl up. So we've got this little bit of action here. And we're actually starting to see that. right here the same thing so hey i've seen this before right so then you could just go ahead and instead of worrying about all the other things you could just jump in anywhere set your stop underneath and you could either take it to previous highs or you could use the trailing idea so on and so forth and even though that gives you a fairly high risk reward ratio because we know that this is a very common pattern it's a very common setup we've seen this over and over again we know that it usually doesn't come back down we could actually plan our stop based on our experience by that low so then we could take this up either to the highs to get a 5R trade or we could just leave the target off and do a complete trailing stop because now we've got a strong move up 
we're pushing past these old highs. We've got a lot of built up momentum here where everybody loaded in for buys. So that's usually a good sign that there's going to be a big move out. And you could have actually got an extreme amount off of this just by running up with a trailing stop. You could have actually taken this. I would say you probably had a trailing stop there and finally got taken out. So if we're looking at that, we are looking at almost a 12R trade again. So this is how you can be discretionary, analyze the market as it's going, hang on to your trade, judge by experience, and just study the chart, study the past, study uh, one pair, and try to get familiar with its typical moves, how it likes to react around different levels, how wide the various levels are. Uh, if you were looking to do something similar to what I do is if you're trading based on levels, uh, one thing I would typically do is I would actually say, okay, here's my level. And typically, okay, there's eight. And I've noticed on the Euro that this is typically between 12 to 14. So there's, you know, we could have used the eight pip stop. But if we're looking here, we're looking at about 21. And I would look at that in consideration. So I can account for that in the stop. So just basically kind of judge how far it will typically disrespect the level. And that will give you an idea of a general zone. So if you're more of a zone instead of a line type trader. So we could consider this like a zone. It didn't spend very much time staying in the top of the zone, so that could have been also a good long entry uh, based on some strategy. So if you were looking at zone type trading, uh, you could have went with something like that and gotten a substantially higher risk to reward. It's all based on how well you study the chart, how well you recognize the typical patterns of what's happening in the market. Um, each pair is going to have its own little nuances and little quirks, uh, little strange things that it will do. Um, so that's why it's always advisable to try to just pick one pair and kind of stick with it. That way you get to know all of the little nuances, all of the little tricks and the way things go, the way things work. So... Uh, then you can also learn its little patterns, its little behaviors, when it likes to fit, how it reacts in the news. There's just so many different little aspects of what's going on that you can take any number of reasons and combine it to try to make an overall judgment of the move of the market and try to figure out what that next move is going to be. Um, like, you know, real common, uh, if you see quick reactions like this, uh, double reactions that are strong in the opposite direction, it looks like you have a clear support level, uh, that usually will happen often, uh, so you could be actually taking this, and if you look and notice, you know, it does typically uh, range sometimes, and sometimes it's trending, right now it looks to be trending, but at times you could actually identify that, okay, we've kind of had a real slow trend here. Now we've kind of stalled, kind of stalled, went back in. So you could kind of start trading this as an overall range. And now you have multiple different opportunities to actually take advantage of consolidation. So instead of waiting, you know, that two or three weeks to trade, you can adjust based on what you see and trade what you see and start taking different trades so notice there's a level here that you could actually use you got the top well defined you've got a couple of different points to kind of define things uh, now this is more of a flatter type consolidation if we take into account the entire range and apply our price action rule Again, most of that action is going on in the upper half of that consolidation. And what happened? It went up. We ended up traveling up. I made a substantial move out of that. 
It wasn't a humongous move, but it was a substantial and extended move. And the reason being because everyone going long is going to be buying here off the bottom. And anybody thinking trade will continue, but does not know they're outnumbered by buyers, they're going to sell up here to push the price down to give the buyers a better price to go up. So that's why you notice you start having more and more consecutive hits, and then you get a high volatility here. And that's usually a indication because notice there's not a whole lot of volatility, not very strong. It didn't move very strong out of that level, but we didn't. You may have not have de decided that was a level to use until about this point here. And then you notice, okay, there's another weak area, but it's still not breaking this. So that could give you a sign that there's probably a lot of orders waiting at this level. But then once you notice that volatility increase, that's when you notice more buyers are actually getting into the market and we're getting ready to make that big push. So notice it kind of makes the same pattern each time it goes in. Slowly that time, but the same pattern. Boom, boom, curl up, boom, boom, curl up. So notice it's doing this and how it's reacting to levels. So that's one of the particular nuances. So that you know, I mean, I could keep going and going and going, uh, but these are different things to just kind of look at overall and notice. I know one uh, couple of little tricks that I can advise is whenever you are looking at these different levels, a lot of times I would like to go with the wick points to start with. And then what I would do is start looking for something rather common. Notice how these wick points lined up and made support later. Uh, this is one thing I also noticed about the Euro USD. It may apply. Uh, it does kind of apply to other pairs, but notice wick point, wick point. Notice they're being respected. So you got the wick point, wick points. Those that was resistance. That was support. Wick point was support turned into resistance it nah, and one other common pattern thing that I noticed about the euro USD is it will alternate between disrespecting levels and respecting it later so this is the one exception to the rule of using older data whenever you have levels like this on the euro USD and it just blows right through it it will use these levels coming back so that you can almost count on 100% because notice here Something else to kind of look at as you're observing your price action. Notice we had a double bottom off of one level. We had some more spike points off of other levels. And notice how they lined up back here with these little zones, little midline, that little break, retest, that point. So it disrespected it and then it used it. So you could actually take that into account when you're actually making some trading plans, taking a look at things, and actually deciding on entry points. And that could really help you zero in on your entries and, you know, taking another look here since we've got some levels. Take a look at this real quick. This uh, stop loss general idea, see, notice it disrespected the level by about eight to nine pips. So if we were using like a 15 pip stop or so, that may be fairly safe because there's not very many places where actually you would need more than that. So there, let's set this to about 14.8. So if we took a short at that level with a 15 pip stop, we would be safe until we got to that point. So that's one thing I like to look at after I've made levels, but now, you know, it's a very common pattern. Notice 11, 5, 12, so we're less than 15. So if we were looking to be extremely tight and aggressive, we could actually probably go with a 14 pip stop. And that's kind of the way I determined the stop for the 15 minute strategy that I kind of started playing around with. So uh, just a bunch of different ideas to notice. But the main thing to notice is just notice and look at patterns because that's going to be the most helpful along the way of when you're looking to make a decision and, mar and the market is just choppy 
where other traders are not trading you already know you've seen this you know it typically goes short so you jump in cover your most recent high cover a potential for liquidity sweep if you want to be a little bit more conservative and then you know just ride the wave and then once you see that price is struggling with volatility at its last high you can actually probably hold your trade open and finally close it here on this mark so that is something that kind of comes with experience and practice uh, the main thing is though just kind of focus on what the market is actually trying to tell you instead of trying to look at just one particular setup or one particular entry one particular style take a look at the overall market perspective and picture to see what's going on and that will help you plan out your trades much better to know uh, that you can have a lot more confidence and certainty because now you're reading all this action you know from experience that okay we've got this little triangle pattern here uh, and we've kind of had a false breakout we kind of made the range a little bit bigger we could even say that's even a channel and the same rules apply for channels we get the copier to work correctly there we go so you could even do something like that and notice that's a channel and then it kind of takes away the idea of the square consolidation but then you notice that curve would start to give away that you're definitely going short because like we talked about that's when sellers pile in so uh just take note of different things uh, i've noticed uh i've had a couple of questions about technical analysis and that's mostly just the way that you see it but those ideas are things that i can point out to you that I see most commonly that tend to line up fairly well and tend to be fairly reliable in being able to use them. So it's something that just mostly takes experience, but the more time that you just spend studying a chart, you don't necessarily have to sit here and watch every tick. You can always pull back data and go back in history and just kind of look at what's already happened. It's a lot easier to see what's already happened and kind of step back for a minute and judge and see what's going on uh, you can notice your different little common patterns like i know we talked about doing the curve it didn't quite work out in that situation but there's probably something else going on in there that we are missing just by looking at it from afar so yeah so let's go ahead and pull that box and look so if we use that as the level we notice most of the most of the price action and consolidation is down on the bottom so it went short so another thing here we do consolidation if we look at this little zone that one's a little bit 50 50 but then we apply the curve thought and idea to it now we see that same little curve again where it kind of went up a little bit sharply and then kind of gradually and slowly rolled over and down down she went so there's another indication that if this idea this is not giving you much to work with some other things you can look at so this way you can always like i say just you can always have an opportunity for a trade or something to potentially look at as a opportunity to set something up for later uh, it could also help you with planning ahead. If you're doing hedging, I tend to stick to the hybrid hedging. It offers a little bit more freedom. It's a little bit more cost effective as well in trading. Uh, and it doesn't uh, incur a whole lot of swap fees unless I do uh, swing a trade or two. Um, but uh, each person will have their own individual style, their own individual way of looking at the market. But my best advice is just take a few of the basic patterns like your double bottom, uh, your break and retest type styles, uh, your trend lines, uh, maybe even look at just different ideas of volatility and patterns of volatility. Uh, one of the biggest things I usually tend to point out is the change in volatility. So like notice here we have a line and it started to get a bit more volatile right here so that would be the first sign that something is potentially coming then we get smooth price action 
it breaks down but then it's still kind of smooth so I would consider even though it's not the same shape if you actually take a look at the structure of the candles they're still relatively similar in size there's more volatility that lines up with this level to indicate okay more buyers are coming in and then right here is when we really start to have that major volatility change notice the size of these candles and they're kind of gradually increasing in size there and then they're gradually changing size all the way through they're smoothly changing size and then we have this snap once we start getting these little snaps these quick back and forth i imagine there was some news going on here but when you get a heavy movement with a lot of wicks a lot of heavy back and forth and it's starting to uh, again make our little uh curve pattern you start to see that little curve we don't really so much see uh the v shape pattern where we had before where it was like this but we are starting to see curves and this is a heavy buy-in this is a lot of buyers chasing price up trying to catch it before that big move out so that uh is one way to kind of look at support and resistance in a dynamic way without a moving average as one idea so you just have that kind of push in a curved fashion anytime you see something uh that's flat with a curve typically price will continue in that curve fashion so we have that curve there price went up you start to see a little bit of a curve here across the top it may not be noticeable right away but you start to see where that resistance gets curved in and we had some flat levels here but that curve we'll zoom in just to get a little bit better look at it so basically just from here to here might even be a good signal that okay things are starting to short you had this level here price is breaking below tried to make a liquidity grab at it even though it wasn't very strong but then finally broke rolled past you could have even waited for confirmation if you like to do confirmations and taking the entry at the close of this candle and taking it down to the next level and gotten two to one on that one and typically one of the rule to keep in mind is what the market quickly gives it does like to try to take it back away but just like we talked about in the pattern in the open of the video we had a strong push up slow downward push we lined up with the top of this a little bit i mean adjust this because that is a little bit older data <laughs> so it's not lined up with the future data but notice how we're using a lot of support we come down tap it again get the buyer load in on the news and spike up so uh that is also another pattern that i will explain uh, this is something that you can actually do a little bit further research because I don't know all of the details about it. I just know the characteristics of it. So uh, this is what would be considered like a Wyckoff accumulation pattern. That's where we have some type, some type of downtrend. And then we have sort of a little bit of a double bottom to kind of stop that downtrend and signal that it's over then price will typically push up to establish a top part of the range and then they have one part called jumping or crossing the river uh, i think that's the crossing the river this is the the bridge and that will usually typically make the top of the range then we will come back down to the bottom and we will cross the river i believe that is called and then this uh, you can actually leave a note down below if I'm not correct about the terms, but this here is the only thing I'm really worried about to confirm this pattern, and that's called the spring. So basically that spring will sometimes even violate these lows, but once you see price come down and then snap right back up to where it came from and continue crossing the river, that's going to be a solid entry point to go for a big long move. 
Um, so that is actually a basic and textbook Wyckoff accumulation pattern. So just keep that little bit of setup in mind as well when you're back testing. You'll probably notice that now that I pointed it out. Uh, you may tend to notice that a little bit more frequently in your testing uh, because you typically do see this Wyckoff accumulation and distribution. Uh, the distribution does kind of still look a little bit funny, but it does involve uh, typically making a lot of uh, curves downward. I uh, don't quite see anything that might relate to that. Uh, we didn't quite get a very strong setup there for anything. Oops, move that back. So I'll move back ahead to the forward price action and see if we have anything kind of set up for us over here check on that trade uh no it's still just kind of riding right along flattened out uh so i may not see much going on today it is the open of the market but i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up before it gets too long uh over time i'm gonna give a few examples we'll take uh some example trades and back testing with all of these ideas once we get uh, finished with the third part of the uh, discretionary series, we'll start doing some actual uh, chart action. I'll probably even pull up a different pair that I'm not exactly the most familiar with, and we'll work through that together as well and just make some trades and see if we can grow an account, uh, grow an account without making our chart a complete and utter disaster. Uh, so I will clean all of this up and take a look at it uh, in the future um, see what happens I'll leave this little drawing here we'll see what happens uh, just to see how well this read of consolidation is looking and we'll see what happens so I'll just leave that little bit there for now and uh, thanks for sticking through and watching to the end if you made it this far I really appreciate it and thanks for all the support uh, it means a lot to me that you guys are finding use and interest in education and what I provide. I'm going to continue to provide that, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and turn on the bells for notifications, and I'll get as much information out as I can as time permits. Uh, there's so many different things involved in trading, so many different things to look at, ideas, strategies, so if there's anything particular you have a question about or anything that you may want to try to see a video about and see my opinion about, just leave a note below and I will do my best to try to get to it. And uh, it may even turn into an entire uh, new series or topic or discussion. So uh, just let me know and I will see what I can do to get something uh, taken care of to answer the question and try to shed a little bit more light. Uh, my ultimate goal is just help people become profitable. Uh, I've been profitable for quite a while now and I'd like to, I really don't like to see other people, uh, not basically just not being able to be consistent or be able to make it. So my goal is to try to help, uh, traders become profitable if at all possible, uh, in any way that I can. So, uh, cheers. I'll see you on the next video.